practicing for a game that they're going to win on Sunday. We know that because we want to be here again in a couple of weeks, so let's all keep our, hi Cecilia, uh, keep our uh, fingers crossed. I want to welcome everyone here to Tim Hortons Field this morning for some really, really exciting news. Well, as you know, Hamilton is hosting the Grey Cup this year and again in 2023. And with the 108th Grey Cup Championship only days away, I am thrilled to be here this morning with my very dear friend, Lisa McLeod, Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture. Hamilton has a really proud football tradition and has hosted the Grey Cup 11 times. On December 12th, Tim Hortons Field is going to come alive with 24,000 enthusiastic CFL fans. And of course, every single one of them will be fully vaccinated. And even though the usual festivities are being modified to accommodate public health measures, that will not dampen the Grey Cup spirit here in the city of Hamilton, I can assure you that. The excitement has been building for years. And of course, you can guess who I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for hometown Thai Cats to win this weekend, as I said, against the Argonauts, which will put them one step closer to playing in the championship game. It has been 25 years since Hamilton last hosted the Grey Cup, and this city is ready to roll out the welcome mat for the thousands of visitors who will arrive here over the next few days. The hospitality sector cannot wait to showcase Hamilton's incredible restaurants, and I mean incredible restaurants. We have seen some of the most interesting, fabulous, spots, venues open up over the past decade and I would invite each and every one of you to go to your regular spot and to try new restaurants but Hamilton is second to none now when it comes to to dining and it will be a great cup party in the hammer like no other and to help start the festivities I want to welcome the Minister of Sport, Tourism and everything else and my very very dear friend Lisa McLeod. Thanks very much, Donna. It, it's really great to be here, and my goodness, it's been a long road to recovery, both on the social and economic side of the ledger, and it's been a very difficult. And so I wanted to, just before I get started, thank Donna for her strong advocacy. Um, although she's not my parliamentary assistant, I wish she were, she's a really strong advocate for heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. I'd also like to, uh, to say thanks to my, my colleague and friend, uh, Scott Mitchell. Uh, Scott and I have uh, maintained um, regular contact throughout this pandemic, uh, really trying to make sure that we were able to land this great cup, and uh, we are able to do that and, and bring it back in 2020. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I want to say thanks as well to Dwayne for joining us. Uh, he is the Chief Grey Cup uh, um, Events Officer with the CFL, and, and uh, he is here on behalf of Randy Ambrosi, a great friend of mine, somebody who, who I uh, got to spend a lot of time with during this, uh, the last couple of years. And of course, uh, your Mayor, Hamilton Mayor Fred Eisenberger, thank you for joining us today. I know it's not been easy as a municipal politician as it hasn't uh, during, uh, for those of us at the provincial level, uh, to manage the pandemic. And I think today's announcement is a lot about optimism. It's about the future of Ontario and the social and economic recovery that we are longing for uh, in this wonderful province. And of course, what I love about the Great Cup, and I'm an Ottawa girl, so I know my beloved Red Bucks are having a rough go and, and they're not vying for this. Uh, but I can say, you know, having been there and, and supporting our Red Blacks, as I will, the Tie Cats and um, I won't mention the other team while I'm in Hamilton, um, <laughs> but I'm sure they're, at, they're in Toronto watching me. Um, the wonderful thing about the Grey Cup, it really does embrace all of the things that are heritage, sport, tourism, and culture in the province of Ontario. And I think when you talk about the 108th and the 110th uh, Grey Cup, it's 25 years since the last uh, Grey Cup was hosted in Hamilton, you're really talking about the heritage of, of our country. Um, you know, it is obviously revolving around sport. Some of the best athletes in our country are right behind us, uh, training and playing and, uh, and being competitive at the same time offering sportsmanship. It really is a lot about tourism. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because you are going to bring people from around the country and from different parts of the world um, who are safely able to come back here and who are, as Donna said, um, going to be uh, double vaxxed. 
And then it is a lot about culture. And when I talk about culture, it's not just about our culture identity as Canadians, it's about music, live music at halftime. And I'll never forget in a very cold halftime show in Ottawa, Shania Twain coming onto the field. And you know, when I think about some of the great Canadian acts that, uh, that the Grey Cup has been able to showcase over the many years, it really is about culture too. So heritage sport, tourism, and culture really is the Grey Cup. And that's why I'm really excited to be here. Um, and there were days that we didn't know, and Scott will say this, we didn't know whether we were going to be able to host the Grey Cup, let alone um, have fans in stands. And here we are today at maximum capacity, allowing people to go to a Blue Jays game at maximum capacity or uh, a Raptors game. I won't get into the Battle of Ontario with hockey um, as, a, as a Sens fan, but um, we're not doing so great there either. <laughs> it's been a tough year for us down in Ottawa. Um, but uh, I have to say, this particular announcement means a lot to me because it really is kickstarting and uh, looking at the economic recovery and the social recovery of the sectors that have been hardest hit, the first hit, and are taking the longest to recover. And uh, Scott and I were having conversations over the summer and in September, and we sort of had that deadline of early October where we had to make or break. And I offered up a million five for this Grey Cup, and so I'm pleased to announce today that your Ontario government will be investing $1.5 million for the 108th Grey Cup. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Because uh, Scott and I were talking and he was working with the Board of Governors and Randy and uh, he said, I think we might be able to make a pitch for 2023. And I said, if you can land it for 2023, I'll give you another $1.5 million and invest that into the city of Hamilton. And so today's announcement is, yes, we've got two great cups, but your Ontario government is committed to investing $3 million to fund both of those games so that we can bring fans from across our province and the rest of the country here to watch some great football, watch some great music, and bring back tourism to the city of Hamilton and really make sure that our hotels are filled here, that the restaurants, as Donna said, will be filled, and that uh, there will be shopping, and we'll, we're going to see a great recovery. And it takes me to the, uh, the economic side of this. Uh, I'll often get people saying, well, why are you giving away my tax dollars? We're not, we're investing. Every time this ministry invests $1 into a festival or event, we yield back 21 in return. Do the math. In the next two games here in Hamilton, it will be upwards of $200 million that will be injected into this city because your Ontario government has the confidence in the Grey Cup Committee, in the Hamilton Tie Cats, and the city of Hamilton. And so I'm looking forward to seeing um, all of that economic benefit come to light and to fruition. And I, I also wanted to say this, uh, after we made that announcement, um, after Scott worked with uh, the, the governors and, and the CFL commissioner to land uh, both the games here right now in, in 2021 and into 2023, I had two important phone calls. One was from the Ottawa Red Blacks, the other was from the Toronto Argonauts saying thank you for making sure the Grey Cup is staying in Ontario. And I think that's incredible sportsmanship. I think that's something we should be very proud of. And I think it speaks to the volume of the Ontario spirit that we've had throughout this entire pandemic. Ontario first. We are right now not competitors. We might be on the field. But right now, all of our major sports organizations in this province, they have stepped up for the past 20 months to make sure each of them have an equal playing field and an equal footing in order to not only survive this pandemic, but to thrive post-pandemic. So with that, I'm looking forward to coming myself uh, with Donna to the Grey Cup. Uh, and I'm looking forward to an Ontario team hoisting that cup. And I know that many people have worked long and hard to ensure that this game is going to be played here at this moment. And I say to all of you, as I've said with some of the other events that we're doing, it is absolutely key and pivotal to the economic recovery of Ontario that sport hosting events continue to occur, that we have a revival in our cultural and arts sectors, that we bring back tourism uh, to the extent that we saw post pre-pandemic, and of course that we remember our heritage. And so really delighted to be here today to make this announcement. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And then I think as well, what will be beautiful is the screaming fans in the stands 
and you can't put a price tag on the social recovery of the province of Ontario and uh, that's as well what this is going to be about. So thanks everyone very much. We're just delighted to be able to be here on behalf of Premier Ford uh, to make this announcement. I look forward to coming back and I'd now like to turn it over to my most expensive friend in the, in the room, Scott Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you, Minister McLeod. Always a, a very tough act to follow. We'll certainly give the Red Blacks some credit for their sportsmanship, not so much the other team, unfortunately, today. Okay? <laughs> we got our team out practicing here, uh, Lisa, so I'd be in big trouble. But I uh, want to thank uh, Minister McLeod and MPP Scali and everybody from the province of, uh, of Ontario. Um, you know, it's really been a difficult 20 months, as Lisa said, in the sports and culture industry, but I uh, want to thank uh, Minister McLeod for her continued dogged determination and leadership, uh, always very consistent, uh, reaching out to all of us in the industry, not just the sporting side, the culture side. How can her, her and her staff help? How can the province help get us back to some uh, sense of normalcy? How can she help uh, inject some, uh, some uh, reality or some, some reality back into the industry? And how can she help uh, not just work on professional sports, but how can she get... Uh, kids back playing sport? How can she get back the artists back playing music? How can she get back the teams get back on the field? And of course most importantly for us, how can we can help get our teams back on the field and playing in front of our audiences? So it's been a uh, it's been a great experience with Minister McLeod, her staff, the province, MPP Skelly and everyone else and if it wasn't for their leadership uh, we would not be here today talking about the 2021 and 2023 Grey Cup. So we're, we're extremely excited obviously about not just the 2021 but the 2023 Grey Cup. Um, you know we anticipate one and three Canadians will be watching all or part of the Grey Cup uh, a week from Sunday. Uh, we'll have a couple hundred million dollars, as Minister McLeod said, injected into the economy of both the province and, uh, and the city of Hamilton. And uh, of course, after missing a Grey Cup last year, uh, we couldn't be more excited and uh, don't think it's any more logical than to bring the Grey Cup back to the city that fo where, football, where football matters. And so we're excited about the opportunity to participate in the economic re recovery of Ontario and use the Grey Cup as a part of that recovery. But most importantly for us, it's about the experiences, the fans. Obviously, Grey Cup is something that builds experiences for everybody. It, it unites Canadians from coast to coast. It's the single largest sp annual sporting event in Canada. It builds memories. It builds relationships. And we're so thrilled to be bringing that back to Canadians and bring it back to, uh, to Hamilton. So, Minister McLeod, I want to thank you very much, MPP Skelly, very much for all uh, your support. I want to thank the uh, Board of Governors uh, and Duane and the Commissioner Ambrosi for their belief in Hamilton, not just bringing it back to uh, Hamilton after uh, 25 years, but uh, allowing us the opportunity to put on a great, great cup this year, as I said, that will unify and bring back uh, football to Canadians from coast to coast, but of course then having the opportunity to put on a great cup in 2023, which we hope will be post-pandemic in 2023 and all the great uh, things that come with it. The uh, the support from everybody, from our partners and our fans, has been terrific. I didn't even get a chance to tell uh, Minister McLeod, but the demand has been excellent. Uh, obviously, we fully anticipate a uh, sold-out Great Cup. In fact, due to the demand, we've we've released another thousand tickets that we're going to accommodate people throughout the throughout the stadium. I'll let uh, I'll let Matt Affnick deal with the ramifications of that and uh, and taking care of all those details. So I want to thank Dwayne and the board for their belief in Hamilton, and obviously for the city of Hamilton. And, you know, it's really uh, an incredible few months that's going to occur here in Hamilton, quickly becoming the the single. Uh, the, the big sporting event capital of Canada. Uh, this Sunday we'll have the, the Canadian Premier League Championship with Forge FC playing Pacific FC. A week later we'll have the Grey Cup. Uh, about six weeks after that we're going to have an opportunity to host probably the most significant uh, uh, men's national team qualifying soccer match in, in Canadian history with Canada hosting uh, the USA here on January 30th and then just six or seven weeks later we'll be uh, putting on the uh, with the NHL we'll be putting on the Heritage Classic with a great uh, great game between the Sabres and the uh, and the Leafs so it's an incredible opportunity for us to showcase Hamilton uh, with all these wonderful great uh, world-class events uh, bring all those events to Tim Hortons Field and the city of Hamilton and I want to thank the Mayor Eisenberger, uh, Council, staff for all their support. No Grey Cup uh, can be successful without a true partnership with the city um, and we're thrilled to be able to bring the 2021 and 2023 Grey Cup uh, to Hamilton and hopefully uh, hopefully with the right results in the next couple of weeks we'll not only just bring the event we might bring a Grey Cup home as well. So for Mayor Eisenberger, <laughs> Mayor Eisenberger thank you very much to you and your staff and uh, Council for all the support and the partnership uh, to make all this happen. With that said I'm going to bring up Dwayne for his remarks and welcome from the CFL. Thank you very much, Scott. I need my glasses or I won't see a thing. 
Um, uh, thank you very much. On behalf of the CFL and its Board of Governors, I want to first off formally thank the province of Ontario for your support for 2021 and 2023's support for Grey Cup. With that support is just unbelievable and we could not thank you more, so thank you very much. Randy is unfortunately traveling today, so he couldn't be here. He really wanted to be here, but um, he sent me in. He just wanted to say, again, the extreme gratitude for all the support. Um, so thank you, Minister, the Honourable Lisa McLeod, Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture. Did I get it right? Perfect. Uh, you have a lot of titles, and when you said today that um, Grey Cup really represents all of those things, you're really, you're, you're bang on. Um, Grey Cup, in a, you know, has everything from culture to arts to, to sports to um, just, you know, generating $100 million of economic impact. The whole, the whole country's coming to a marketplace is really what it is, and so thank you so much. I'd also like to thank local MP Donna Skelly. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's give her a round of applause. So we, like you both have said, our speakers to date, um, we are really, really, really excited. You know, leading into this year, and it's been well talked about, we didn't know if we would have uh, fans in the stands. We didn't know if we had 50%. We didn't know if we'd be at 100%. And it's just been, uh, you know, touch and go as we've been going. And now here we are, and, you know, a little over a week away, we're going to host this great cup in this great city. And we're going to have full attendance, and we're almost sold out. And it's going to be exciting. And, and what excites me the most is that we didn't, a couple of months ago, didn't even know if we're going to have a great cup with fans. And now we're going to have a great cup sold out in a tremendous place. And, and, and it's, we could not be more excited about that. Grey Cup is an opportunity to unite the nation. And, you know, like Scott mentioned, one, one out of every three Canadians will be watching and then there'll be everybody in the marketplace. And it's just that time, it's going to be that point of uh, reflection. We're coming out of this pandemic and it's going to be very, very exciting times. Um, we could not do this without the province's support. I also, I echo Scott's comments, um, Mayor. Um, Mayor Eisenberger, that you cannot host a, a Grey Cup without tremendous support from the city. So I want to formally thank the City of Hamilton, <laughs> all of its councillors and all of your management for um, all the support. It's very important. The logistics behind a Grey Cup are immense and without uh, a strong partnership you cannot do it. So thank you very much. And then I would be, I, I have to say thank you to um, uh, Bob Young, Scott Mitchell, uh, Matt Afnick, Doug Rye, and all of, the, all of the staff at the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and the festival staff that Greg Dinnett and his team have assembled. Um, it's a very, very tasking job to host a Grey Cup, and they work very, very hard. There's lots of details. Um, it is, it, you know, Scott mentioned it, it is Canada's largest annual sporting event, and we're doing it at a rapid pace. So I just, it could not be done without the, the team and this great facility, and we cannot be happier to be here for this year and actually getting this game off the ground, and we're going to award a champion. And, um, and coming out of this pandemic, that is something that we should all be very, very, very proud of. So thank you to the team. Let's give them a round. At this point, I would like to invite the mayor up to say a few words. Thank you very much. It's absolutely nothing left to say other than uh, thank you. Uh, I was going to talk about how, you know, when it was not here and how it's come here and how, how we missed it last year, but we're, uh, we're looking forward to that great Grey Cup experience here in the city of Hamilton. Uh, again, uh, that full week of, uh, of entertainment we're not going to have this year, but certainly we hopefully we'll have that in 2023. So thank you, CFL. Uh, more importantly, and I, I, I need to say this uh, more often than not, uh, this provincial government has been a real friend to Hamilton. In fact, it's been a real friend to all of Ontarians. Uh, you know, getting through this pandemic was no easy challenge. And, uh, and the work that your government and the Premier and all of you have done uh, uh, has been outstanding. Uh, were it not for the investments that are being made or have been made, uh, we would be in very, very dire straits today. So we need to continue to support our economy. And culture and entertainment is a significant part of any community's economy, whether you're in Ottawa or whether you're in Hamilton or where you're, whether you're somewhere else in the country. But as a Hamiltonian and as a, 
as a Hamilton Tiger Cats fan, and all Hamilton Tiger Cats fan would probably say this, Argos suck. <laughs> they always will. It'll be forever. It'll never stop. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll not play as well as they can uh, this coming week, and we'll have the perfect scenario for Hamilton, which would be the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Grey Cup uh, performing. That would be ideal. So, Minister, your funding and your support me makes all the difference in the world, uh, not only for, uh, for the community as a whole, but for the country. Uh, this is a national event, and uh, this is something that does uni unify the country. Uh, you know, anyone, even if they're a marginal football fan, tunes into the Grey Cup to, uh, to enjoy and appreciate, uh, you know, three hours of entertainment. So this is going to be a great national event, and uh, your help and support will make it happen not only this year, but in 2023 as well. So we're very, very grateful. I have nothing that uh, the, the, our, our, our partners, uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, keep bringing good product to the field. Uh, whether it's the football team or the Forge coming up this weekend, or you know a great concert that's going to happen uh, in or not a concert, a, a, a hockey game that's going to happen right here uh, in our facility. It is great for Hamilton. It's great for Hamilton fans. It's great for hockey. Uh, it's great for football. It's great for soccer. And all of those are valuable entertainment enterprises in our community that not only provide entertainment but economic impacts. And so uh, for anyone that says it's, this is not a wise investment, just think it through. Calculate the numbers. As you, as you have done and have shared with us, uh, the numbers actually demonstrates that uh, this is an economic return to our community that is going to far outweigh any investments that uh, you or anyone else is making in this product. So on behalf of the City of Hamilton, Minister, please uh, share with you and, and the Premier our gratitude for this investment and all that you've done helping us get through this pandemic. And Donna, thank you for your advocacy. I'm sure you're pushing hard to ensure that uh, Hamilton gets its fair share in, in our community. So thank you for all of that. And we look forward to a great game on Sunday and then a great uh, final Grey Cup here a couple of weeks from now that I think is going to be a fantastic opportunity for our community to come together and for the country to come together. Thank you all very much. We'll now take questions from the floor. There is a mic to the left of the riser if there is any questions from the media. Just well, before a there's any questions, I, th I think I'd really like to see the challenge between Mayor Eisenberger and Mayor Tory for this Sunday. So, okay, good. Because <laughs> those were tough words. <laughs> yeah, don't put accurate. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to wade into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm Team Ontario. So, I'm <laughs> not. Yeah, happy to take any questions. Just uh, a reminder, one question, one follow-up. Go ahead, Scott. You can barely see over there, yeah. like, so many lights. <laughs> Scott Radley from the Hamilton Spectator. How does $1.5 million for each of these games compare to previous Grey Cups that the provincial government has contributed to? Yeah, I think we generally would probably contribute upwards of a million dollars. Uh, this year, obviously, um, the, the province, uh, through my ministry, uh, recognized that the economic and social recovery of each and every community across the province uh, was going to um, require uh, us to invest a little bit more. So this year, we took our festival and event programming from $19.5 million to $50 million. Uh, recognizing that we were doing a, a variety of different types of event, live events like this one. Uh, we have a, a number of uh, virtual events still ongoing and then hybrid events. And we recognize that uh, when we make this investment, um, you know, I see Super Crawl behind you. So uh, let's use a, a music example, um, a festival. In that case, you're actually starting to see some people that hadn't worked in 18 months by us, to, you know, investing 250000 or whatever uh, to a festival was allowing people to get back to work. So the sound stage, for example, the crew behind that, uh, you know, porta potties being sold, fences being erected. Um, security guards working for the first time so we felt it was necessary this year to increase that pot and we were able to do that and through that fund we were able to uh, support um, the Hamilton Tiger Cats in their bid for this year and uh, three years from now so it is a bit more than we normally would but we felt this year uh, more than any year that uh, that uh, Ontario uh, should be supporting uh, local festivals events like the Grey Cup because they're 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 going to bring um, you, know, so, you know from tourism from the tourism perspective filling our hotels and our restaurants uh, to the culture uh, 
part of it, making sure that we've got live music again, which has been suffering probably the worst, the pandemic and of course live sport, um, getting that back uh, and then um, just, just making sure that we've got fans in stands. So it was really incredibly important for us to make this investment. And it was follow without up? hesitation. Yeah. Uh, follow up would be either to Scott or to Dwayne, but the 1.5 million, um, it's been sort of very broadly said this will help with tourism. What will 1.5 million go to? What, what, where will we see tangible use of that money? What would it change? Do you want to come up here? Yeah, yeah, so Scott, that's a great, Scott, correct? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, just to answer, to follow up on, on um, the minister's response, in a normal year, um, uh, a province would, uh, it's about a $1.5 million as well. So this is very comparable to other Grey Cups in 2018 and 2019 in both Edmonton and Calgary. And um, traditionally, funding would go to of support the overall infrastructure of Grey Cup. Um, it's a very costly undertaking, as you, as you can imagine. So the support really helps to, to build the overall platform for everything you do from um, music to events to, it's not just the game, it's everything that surrounds the game. And then it also to drive the economic impact into the marketplace. Thank you. Yeah. Next question, please. All right. Adam from CHCH, I'll follow up on, on those questions a little bit, uh, probably either Fred or Scott. Uh, what kind of events will be happening uh, before the Grey Cup and, and leading up to the Grey Cup? <laughs> so um, uh, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown of what's sort of happening next week is um, uh, so the, the teams will arrive, you know, the, whoever obviously wins East and, and West final, the, the arrivals were, will be on Tuesday. Um, the Grey Cup arrival will, will happen as well and that happens on Tuesday. Um, we, we, Wednesday kicks into uh, press conferences for the, the head coaches and then Thursday we sort of really get into more of the meat of, of what's going to happen in Grey Cup week. Um, there will be a media day event which both teams come in um, and, and have a media day. There is um, a couple of smaller parties. Spirit of Edmonton is coming in, and they start up on, on, on Thursday night. And then on Friday, we basically take over the, the Hamilton Convention Center. And there is um, uh, Eastern Social Hall, which um, we will honor sort of the, the, the title billing will go whoever is in the game. And then we we'll represent all the other Eastern clubs. And there's also the Western Social Hall. Friday night's also the awards ceremony, the traditional awards, where we on it's, it's our most important important event of any Grey Cup where we honour the players and and um, and make sure that they give the credit which is due for outstanding performances throughout the season. And then we're having a post party as well on Friday night. Then um, the, uh, we're also doing a pre-game tailgate in that in that venue on on Sunday morning leading into the game. And then we get into the game itself and, um, you know, the, the South End Social, which was a part of the original bid from Maddie and his team and Scott, um, we're, we're doing that, which in continuing on where it's the Twisted Tea uh, Social Zone, which has live music and it gives everybody an opportunity to come to the game early. So there's quite a bit of programming, even though um, at the beginning you know it was talked about being modified it hasn't been modified that much and there's really lots to do and we're um, we're very confident that uh, everyone's gonna have a great 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 time next week all right perfect the follow-up follow I'd, like, I'd like individual answers from Scott and uh, Fred on this um, I don't want to jinx anything obviously but how great of an opportunity is this for the Ticats to possibly host the Grey Cup game here in Hamilton and what would it mean to the city and the team Adam, I'm not sure that's a trick question because we are hosting the game. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Key, the, Regardless of what happens on the weekend, we're hosting the game here in Hamilton next weekend. To uh, play in the game. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, success here in Hamilton in the playoffs the last few years. And I think we have the most playoff wins of any team in the CFL the last seven or eight years. But we have not gotten over the finish line in the Grey Cup, obviously. We've had some great opportunities. So all we can do is keep knocking on the door. Uh, and we're excited about the game on Sunday. I think it would be a great game for the CFL. I think the Winnipeg-Saskatchewan game will be a great game for the CFL. And, uh, you know, you got to play them one at a time. So hopefully we can be successful on Sunday. And then, uh, if so, it'll certainly be a special week next week. But regardless, it's going to be a special week for Hamilton and for everybody in Canada as we bring the Great Cup back to uh, to Canadians from coast to coast. Did I mention that Argos suck? I'm oh, sorry, I did mention that. 
I got to give John Tory a call because we have to figure out a, a good competitive, uh, uh, you know, challenge. But uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, but for Hamilton, uh, you know, this is this is a big entertainment uh, opportunity. Clearly, uh, there's economic spin-off in our broader community. There's going to be events uh, happening downtown. There's going to be events happening in this neighborhood, and of course, right here at the convention center. And so all of that means uh, people with, uh, with dollars to spend coming to our town and spend those dollars in facilities, in restaurants, in bars, and in some of the entertainment events that are happening uh, throughout our city. So the economic spinoff for Hamilton is great. The entertainment value is brilliant. Uh, the value of uh, sports in our community has been well defined. And Hamilton has been and continues to be a great sports town all the way from uh, the junior sports all the way up to uh, professional sports. And uh, that hasn't diminished one iota, and that opportunity for kids to participate into healthy sports enterprise, whether it's uh, to, to, to aspire to be part of the, uh, the CFL, or just to get out and get exercise and participate, is invaluable. Health, health issues are of benefit. So you, you, you build out that entire picture, uh, this is what this kind of event actually inspires. Next question, please. If there are no further questions from the floor, we'll go to questions on the phone line. There are currently no questions on the phone. Perfect. Thank you very much. For any media interested, we will be doing a photo op overlooking the field at the end of the announcement. Thank you, everyone.